One of the main objections to ordaining women to the priesthood is the perception that there is no evidence in our tradition to justify such an action. We are told that the pattern is set by Jesus, who ordained 12 male apostles. Now, it is true that the Gospels record these events. It is also true that in the book of Acts, we see these same apostles and other men who are elders directing the church, though it is not a stratified or hierarchical organization, but rather a loose confederation of small household churches. But that is not the only evidence from the New Testament. The term apostle, apostolos in Greek, in the Bible means one who is called and sent out to proclaim the good news of Christ's resurrection from the dead and the spread of his gospel. Because of this, early Christians saw Mary Magdalene as an apostle. Some of the early church fathers even called her the apostle to the apostles, which is really remarkable considering that these men were not always so favorable toward women. Since Mary was the first witness of Christ's resurrection, who then proclaimed this to the other apostles, she was considered worthy of this title apostle. Moreover, many of the early Gnostic gospels and other texts reinforce Mary's priestly and leadership role in the Christian community. In Romans 16, verse 7, we read this statement from the Apostle Paul. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles. Though Junia is sometimes transcribed as Junius, many biblical scholars consider Junia a feminine name, which means that there was a woman among the apostles in Paul's day. Romans 16 also describes another woman, Phoebe, as a deacon and a patroness, which is a title for a head of the household Christian church. Mormonism's founding prophet, Joseph Smith, directly supported the idea that women in the New Testament acted in priestly offices. In 1842, he told the New Female Relief Society organization that he intended to make them a kingdom of priests, as in Enoch's day, as in Paul's day. I am convinced that Joseph saw the restoration of female priesthood as a necessary part of the restoration of all things. The church cannot be complete nor can we ever have a Zion society without the ordination of women to the priesthood and their inclusion in all church offices and quorums. The final evidence for the rightness of female ordination is the LDS belief in God the Mother. The doctrine of the female deity is the foundation of female priesthood. In Mormonism, Godhood is comprised of a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. She is the great high priestess. I feel her spirit in this movement, which gives me hope that our efforts will bear good fruit. Women acting in the priesthood will elevate the status of the female divine and the divine in all females. God moves in a mysterious way her wonders to perform. She plants her footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in an unfathomable mines of never failing skill, she treasures up her bright designs and works her sovereign will. <laughs>